We're going to be getting into a topic and essentially a myth just that literally will not go away. And that is that muscle turns into fat if you stop exercising. And I'm here today to hopefully put that myth to rest once and for all, but also why people can gain more fat when they do stop exercising or weight training. So there's a lot of people out there, they're worried about weight training and they don't want to start because they were like, well, if I ever stop, it's going to turn into more fat. It's not how it works. So what I want to share with you here today is the physiology behind that and also how you can continue to keep making improvements without having to worry about gaining more body fat. All right, so first things first, when we look at our muscle, we're essentially talking about skeletal muscle because there's different types of muscle in the body, right? So there's cardiac muscle, that's your heart. We're talking about skeletal muscle. Those are the muscles that give your body shape, right? But they also are used for real world activities like keeping your posture upright, being able to help you climb a flight of stairs, sprint down the street, lift things, pick things up, et cetera, right? So that's what we use our muscles for. Our muscles are, contended, are, are connected to tendons. We have ligaments that can connect uh, different joints in the body as well. And then we have the fascia. I won't get into all of these things here today, but really what most people are speaking about is the actual muscle itself. Okay, that can grow with weight training. Now, there is still a lot of debate over this. I've seen studies going back and forth that say true, not true, about being able to build more, we'll call them muscle cells or muscle tissue in the body. So there's a school of thought that says you're born with all the muscle tissue you have. However, that muscle tissue can get larger. I didn't get larger in two different ways. So basically, there's the myofibrils and there's the sarcoplasm. And I'm not going to get too deep on this either. But the, the, think of the myofibrils as essentially like the dry weight muscle. And then we know that muscle, though, is about 70% or so water. Think of that as the sarcoplasm, right? Plasm, think of the, the water, the gel inside of that. Well, one of the simplest things to grow muscle to make it bigger is that you enhance or increase the sarcoplasm. It's a much easier way to make those muscles larger, right? Or just seem more toned. And I'm using that in air quotes, right? Because personal trainers, uh, exercise physiologists, they know that you're not really toning the muscle, but you're giving more shape to it by improving the sarcoplasm and uh, essentially uh, wearing away or burning off the body fat on top of it, which we're about to talk to uh, talk about next. All right, so keep that in mind. 70% of the muscles water. You're going to want to remember that one. Now, when we look at the skeletal muscle, it has nothing to do with the adipose cells or adipose tissue. Okay, skeletal muscle, muscle. Adipose is another word for body fat. And these are cells between the skin and the muscle that we call subcutaneous fat. Now, subcutaneous fat doesn't allow you to see the natural tone of the muscle, right? So if you're looking to get more toned, yes, you do resistance training. We'll talk about how much at, towards the end of the show. But really what you're looking to do is eliminate a lot of the fat that covers the muscle, okay? So that's a subcutaneous fat. Now, there's also visceral fat, still adipose tissue, and that is the fat that essentially grows in and around the organs. Very dangerous, very bad for our overall health, okay? You can kind of notice the difference. If you can pinch it, it's usually subcutaneous fat. Visceral fat is the harder fat. Sometimes people say, um, you know, it's what is referred to as like a pot belly or something like that. It's hard fat. It's literally intertwined with our skeletal tissue or muscle tissue, as well as in and around our organs. Very dangerous. I have a podcast though on how to get rid of visceral fat. I'll link that up for you here today at stephencabral.com slash 2834. And if we're ever missing a link, if you ever need anything, just ask. We can find it for you just by asking at cabralsupportgroup.com. And do feel free to leave a comment below the video or podcast as well. Okay. So now that we know the skeletal tissue is totally separate than the adipose tissue, which is the fat, I'm going to add one more thing before we, we, we separate the two completely. Adipose tissue is also in a school of thought that you're not necessarily adding a lot more fat cells beyond childhood, but what you're doing is you're increasing the size 
of those fat cells, a lot like muscle tissue. But that's where it stops. They're two totally different things. Skeletal tissue, adipose tissue. That means that when you lose or your muscles shrink, we'll just say, because that's really what's happening. We'll talk about that in one moment. You don't then gain more fat, meaning that your muscles don't turn into fat. They can't. They're a totally separate tissue in the body. Skeletal tissue is a completely different makeup than adipose tissue. Muscle cells, different than fat cells. Okay, so we know that if you stop weight training, your muscles may shrink, but it doesn't turn into fat. It doesn't work that way. I wanna share with you though, where the knowledge or misnomer came from, because it, it, you do, you can gain weight, so how does that happen? All right, here's how it happens. So, when you stop resistance training or you stop weight training, you can lose a lot of the sarcoplasm in the muscles. It's the fluid that is held there by resistance training exercise followed by proper nutrition. You get a positive boost in hormones, it boosts protein synthesis, it boosts nitrogen retention, it enables the muscle cells to actually take up more nutrients. So your muscles have more tone, for lack of a better term. That's a good thing. When you stop exercising, you lose some of that protein synthesis and that uptake of nutrients, and you lose some of the fluid inside of the cells. So your muscles begin to deflate a little bit, right? So you have less of that nice tone on your shoulders or whatever you might be looking to do, right, in your legs. Okay, what happens though, is you also stop burning as many calories. So if you're not doing resistance training, you don't get that metabolic effect. You don't get the pro-hormone effect. You don't get the improved protein synthesis. You don't use your nutrients as well. And this is what happens then. If you're burning a few hundred calories less per day, that over time can get added to body fat because the calories aren't being used by the muscles, so where do they go? Well, they go to being stored as energy because adipose fat, believe it or not, is simply stored energy. Your body thinks it's doing you a favor by taking the excess calories that you eat and storing them because only until recently did we never have times of famine or hardship or whatever those calories may be needed for. So we have to understand it's a protective mechanism by the body. So if you burn less fuel or the muscles aren't uptaking those nutrients, it's not that the muscle broke down and became body fat, not at all. But what happened is those new calories started to increase the diameter of the fat cells. And so now you start to actually add more body fat. And yes, you can lose muscle, no doubt about it. But the muscle just didn't get transferred to body fat. Hopefully that's helpful in that explanation. So what can you do? Well, the truth is, you don't need more than two to three great workouts per week in terms of resistance training. That does not include cardiovascular work, right? That's on top of this. But three great weight training workouts per week, sure, you could do more, but three is enough. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, any of those with a day off in between is enough to be able to get you the results and maintain the results you want. And the even better news is, you can look at my previous older shows on escalating, de escalating density training principles of how you can condense an hour long workout into 20 to 30 minutes. You really can. You can get amazing results in just three 30 minute workouts per week. That will enable you to better utilize the calories you're eating, help to balance your hormones to a greater degree, re-sculpt, reshape your body, and not have to worry about that muscle turning to body fat, even though we know that that's not what's gonna happen. We do know that it makes your body more metabolic the, resist the more resistance trainings that you do. So now if we know that, and we couple it with the pro proper nutrition, you get the exact results you're looking for.
So help, hopefully this was helpful. I don't want to go too much deeper onto two other uh, different types of rants and, and start to move the subject into another way. However, if there are follow-up questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Leave them in the comments. Feel free to ask them at cabralsupportgroup.com. There's a new daily Cabral concept each and every day. You can find them at stephencabral.com slash podcasts. And of course, share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.